Hey, welcome to the house. My name is Wes and I have the great honor of being the lead pastor here. And I just want to say Merry Christmas and maybe a little bit new uh, for you or a little bit early on in the Christmas season. I know some people, they wait till the last minute, just like their Christmas shopping. Uh, they wait for the last minute to say Merry Christmas, but we want to be one of the first to say Merry Christmas. So wherever you're watching from or wherever you're tuning in from, let us know in the chat box, whether it's on Facebook or on the houseLA.org, or maybe you're watching on YouTube on your TV. Uh, but we just want to say it is a great honor to celebrate Christmas with you. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking uh, through Christmas and we're going to have uh, some special guests with us. So you do not want to uh, miss any of these weeks. We got some very special guests that, that are going to be with us here at the house. Uh, some people that I consider great heroes. And so um, so those are going to be some great weeks. If you haven't yet already, let us know where you're watching from. And by the way, if you want to follow along in our journey, I know you can follow on social, but one of the best ways that you can follow along in the journey with us is if you go to thehousela.org and there will be a spot where it says, hey, do you want some information? Do you want to stay, like, let's stay connected. Uh, shoot us your email because you can't always throw everything out there on social. Uh, and even if we put a social media post out there, you may not see it. Uh, you, may, it may, you may scroll by and you may miss it. And so people may say, oh, I don't know what's going on. Well, uh, make sure that we got your information and we'll make sure to email you some updates about what God is doing here and how you could be a part of that. And so uh, we've always said from the beginning, no matter your background and no matter you, your beliefs, you are welcome here. You're welcome here at the house. And so maybe a friend sent you this message. And so I hope that it encourages you. Uh, in just a minute, we're going to go into a text uh, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number two. And that's one of the Christmas story messages. And um, if you wanted a, ta a, a title, <laughs> if you wanted a title for today's uh, talk, you can write two words, Vintage Christmas. Vintage Christmas. Vintage. Uh, there's been a couple times that I've bought vintage clothes. I bought a vintage leather jacket one time. Um, we bought a vintage desk at our, at our house once, uh, just recently. Actually, I almost brought it to church because I was like, babe, can we put that in our car, our little Prius? She's like, I'm not helping you. If you want to bring that, that is all on you. I was like, but it's vintage and it'll work with the message. And she's like, let's go to Starbucks instead. I'm kidding. She didn't say that. Um, but it's an old vintage desk. Vintage just means it's old, it's authentic, it's original. You know, things these days are so, like, they're made with plastic and pressed wood, and it's just not, it has the appearance of reality, but it's, it's not the real deal. Uh, and so if you'll allow me for a few moments, I want to go through a vintage Christmas. So Luke chapter 2, starting verse number 1, it says this, At that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the whole Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor in Syria. And all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph, this is Jesus' father, stepfather, because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. This was not because they had sexual relations. This is literally because God came to the young woman, Mary, and said, the Messiah, the promised one, the deliverer that we've all been waiting for is going to come to earth through you. While they were there, time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and she laid him in a manger, which is a, a food trough for animals. Why, you may ask? Because there was no lodging available for them. There was no hotels, there was no Airbnbs, there was no friend who had a spare couch, there was nothing. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. It was nighttime, but it looked like day because God showed up. The glory of the Lord surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them saying, don't be afraid. Maybe you're surrounded by fear. I feel like God's message to you, don't be afraid. He said, why? Because I bring you good news 
that will bring great joy to all people. Someone say all people. Come on, say it back. Say all people. Come on, if you're watching online, type it in the chat box. Everyone say all people. To all people. The Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. So you'll know you've come to the right place when you see a brand new baby lying in a food trough. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. So it was just one lead angel and now he's backed up by all of his background vocalists and they all sing together, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to whom, with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, we gotta go check this out. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village. They found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone everywhere. They said, hey, everything that happened that the angel had said to them about this child, all who heard the shepherd's story, they were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. It was just as the angel told them. Vintage Christmas. You know, unless something changes in our world, in the very short future. Christmas as we know it will be canceled. No friends, no family. And there's this deep sense of mourning because there's a deep sense of loss. Uh, For some, they're not gonna be able to see their parents. For some, they're not gonna be able to travel. For some, they may not be able to buy all the gifts that they'd wanted to get. Maybe their shifts get canceled because, oh, we're doing this and this is getting shut down and this is changing around. It's a very real thing out there. So unless something changes, we will all look back on the year of 2020 and we will all remember the time that Christmas was canceled. I remember January of this year, January 27th, uh, was our one year anniversary as a church. Still to this day, we're not even two years old like we're still potty training as a church. But I remember our first year anniversary, Pastor Vanessa and I were walking down the halls of the church. We were celebrating. We had friends there with us that day. We had just, just literally the numbers that we've been praying for, we exceeded. It was incredible. It was awesome. And all of a sudden, I had this prophetic sense from the Lord. Everything's about to change. Everyone around me is celebrating. I was like, we did it. Oh my goodness. There's no room in the parking lot. Cars are parked illegally. And those were the ones that were there early. The cars that came on time are late. They're parking in the street. All This is incredible. And I just remember celebrating. This is so incredible. But also having this sense from the Lord that day, a prophetic sense, like God whispering from heaven, everything's about to change. And for a lot of people right now, they have that sense on them. Christmas is right around the corner, and unless something changes, everything is about to change. Unless there's a practical cure, God moves in and God steps in, unless government changes their mind completely and doesn't want it, unless something changes, Christmas as we know it is canceled. That's as we know it, though. The very first Christmas was nothing like the Christmas that we know. the world was in complete turmoil. People, there was a massive migration of people from one area to another area. A census is going on. The world is being taxed. There's no room for the family of God. The family of God is homeless. And the only place that they can find a home is in a barn with some animals. 
There's families desperately searching for how they can get to where they need to get. And it was in that moment that the Savior of the world chose to come. In that moment. That was the first Christmas. That was vintage Christmas. He did not come into perfection. The Savior chose to come in a time of great global chaos. The Savior brought his perfection into our chaos. Christmas isn't canceled. Christmas as we know it is canceled. But you can't cancel Christ or his mass. You can cancel toys. You can cancel gift exchanges. You can cancel travel. But you cannot cancel a loving God extending his gracious arms of redemption and forgiveness to a humanity spiraled in chaos. If chaos could not cancel the original Christmas, chaos cannot cancel yours. If God breathed life in the middle of a global chaos, God can still breathe life in the middle of your personal chaos that you are feeling right now. Your world may feel upside down. The internal tensions and the external realities that you are facing right now can only be described by the word chaos. You know that you can be confident in the middle of chaos. You can be confident in the middle of chaos. Early on in our church, we had this phrase that we'd say because we weren't always sure what was going to happen next. And we'd say this, we'd say, I don't know how it's going to end. I don't know, but it's going to be great. I don't know what's going to happen next, but it's going to be great. Why? Because God's already there. You can be confident in the middle of chaos. I don't know what's going to happen next. Some people have been asking me, Pastor West, what's going to happen next? When are we going to do this? I'm like, I don't know. Do you? Do you have some information that I don't know? Do you know what our government's going to mandate tomorrow? Do you know what's going to happen next? Do you know what this person's going to say or that person's going to say? Do you know what's going to happen next? No, neither do I. But I do know this. Chaos cannot cancel Christmas. If God fulfilled years of promises that he made to the earth. See, in the very beginning, if you go back to the very beginning, Genesis chapter one, we hear creation. Genesis chapter uh, uh, two, you, you hear another version of creation. Genesis chapter three, it talks about the fall of mankind. And from the very beginning, it's called the Proto-Evangelium. From the very beginning in Genesis chapter three, God looks a serpent in the eye and God says, okay, you think that you've won, but you haven't won. Sin has entered the world. He says, he says, I will put enmity, I'll put frustration between you, the snake, the serpent, the deceiver, the devil, the real enemy, between you and God's people. Between your seed or your offspring and her seed and her offspring. You will bruise his seal, but he'll crush your head. You'll nail him to a cross but he will resurrect and take the keys of hell, death, and the grave with him. So if God fulfilled that promise in the middle of chaos, God can fulfill his promises to you in the middle of your chaos too. Maybe you've got some dreams. Maybe you had some dreams and you put them on hold because you thought this is not the year anymore. This is not the time, hey, you know what, let's just push every dream back. 2021 is now my year. 2022 is now, let's just push all these promises. And some of you, God may have actually spoken to you a date and a time. And so you say, no, hey, let's just push it all backwards. Maybe God's dream for my life will come to pass at another time. Why? Because of COVID? 
Here's an honest question for us to ask. Does COVID get to cancel God's plans for your life or his promises for our world? <laughs> honest question. Does COVID get to cancel God's plans for your life or his promises for our world? No. Let me get this straight. I'm not one of those people on the extreme end that says, hey, this isn't real. No, it's very real. I know quite a few people that have gotten COVID, who have gotten sick. Some it was a little bit easier than others. Others, they were far more concerned. I was literally just praying with a friend yesterday. His dad got a diagnosis and we're praying. We're believing God for a miracle. COVID is wicked. It's terrible. It's come from the pit of hell. My goodness. But it doesn't get to cancel God's plans of grace and goodness for humanity or for you. So Wes, how can you say something like that? Let me explain. In Luke chapter 2, and we read this in Matthew as well. Matthew and Luke are the two gospel accounts of Jesus as a child, Jesus in his birth. Gospel Mark starts up with the, the miracles and the life of Jesus, and the gospel of John starts up with, it's just like poetry. And explaining like the reasonings of, of, of like just of all eternity. And Matthew also tells us the story of Jesus' birth, and he tells it, and he explains that during that time that there was these wise men who came, they saw the story, you know, you know, the, you know the story, right? Where the, the wise men, they come from a far off land, we saw them, you know, we saw the star that we've been hearing about, and we know it's important. And you know what Herod, the wicked ruler of that time did? In an attempt to cancel God's plan, the baby, the Messiah, the promised one, he went after those wise men said, we saw the star, and he went out and he says, hey, come back and tell me where, when you find him. He was trying to be sly about it. And an angel in a dream told him, don't go back to him, he's wicked. And so they left a different way. And so Herod tried to cancel God's plan by killing all the two-year-old boys and, and under. but he was not able to cancel God's plan. It's like the psalmist says, a thousand may fall at your side or 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Chaos does not get to cancel your Christmas because chaos does not get to cancel the plan of God in your life. COVID will not cancel God's plan for humanity, God's plan for his church, or God's plan for you. Christmas is not canceled. I'm here today to declare Christmas is not canceled. God's plan for humanity is not canceled. God's plan for you is not canceled. Don't think for a moment that it is done that he is done or that you are done. Christmas in the middle of chaos was how it all began. This is vintage Christmas. And I believe that this year we have an opportunity to experience a Christmas like no other. That we have an opportunity to experience a vintage Christmas where we can start praying prayers like, God, I want to experience Christmas. I want to experience a real Christmas. God, I want to experience Christ and his mass. I want to experience your promise and your grace in the middle of a global chaos. God, I want to experience a Christmas like the one that you first had. I want a vintage Christmas. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of a global shift, in the middle of God's family being homeless, in the middle of all of this, in the middle of death threats, in the middle of great taxation, in the middle of all of this unknown, in the middle of this, and the angel says, hey, Maybe you don't understand this works. This is a vintage Christmas. And if they can experience glory to God in the highest, so can you 
and so can we. I want a vintage Christmas. And maybe you're watching online and you feel this with me as well. I want you to just do this with me. Let's just lift our hands towards heaven. God, right now, we say, I want a vintage Christmas. God, I want to experience your presence. God, I want to experience your goodness. God, I want to experience glory to God in the highest and peace on earth for all people with whom God is pleased. God, I'm saying right now, God, I want a vintage Christmas. I want a Christmas in the middle of chaos. God, I want to experience your glory. I want to experience your presence. I want to see the heavens opened up and angels see glory to God in the highest in the middle of chaos, in the middle of a global pandemic, in the middle of a, a movement of humanity from one end of the earth to the other. God, I want to experience a vintage Christmas. And God, we want to be a people, God, that the glory of God is not dependent upon an absence of chaos. We want to be a people. God, we want to be a church. God, let the house be a church, God. God, that even in the middle of perfect times, even in the middle of chaos, that we can be a people that experience the glory of God. That experience the presence of Jesus. That experience the goodness of God. Come on, I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what your background is right now, but wherever you are at, my word to you today is Christmas is not canceled. You cannot cancel the plans of God. Chaos cannot cancel the plans of God. And so God, we pray right now, help us to be a people. God, that look to you. God, help us to be a people that experience you, your light, your life, even in the middle of chaos. Thank you, God, for an opportunity to celebrate a vintage Christmas. I'm praying for anyone right now, if you're going through chaos right now, you are a candidate to experience the glory of God. Those shepherds that day, they weren't even looking for it. You may not even been looking for the service. You may not have been looking for this moment, just like the shepherds that day. And God interrupted their moment. God interrupted their work to give them a taste of heaven. Come on, if you're a candidate for that, I want you right now, wherever you're at, if you say, I'm, hey, pastor, I'm in the middle of chaos, I want you to lift your hands towards heaven right now. Put one, at least one hand towards heaven right now and say, you know what, I feel like I'm in chaos and I need to experience that glory right there. God, I'm praying for every single hand lifted. God, whether it's in this room or someone's watching online, God, I'm praying right now the glory of heaven to fill their room. God, the glory of God to fill their life. God, to fill their heart right now. The very real presence of Jesus filling them in the middle of a chaotic moment. God, help us to experience our very first vintage Christmas. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you watching online, I'm gonna send this out to our lobby and I'm gonna let our team out there pray with you. Hopefully I'll see you back next week here at the house. If this encouraged you or if this blessed you, I'm gonna encourage you to share it with a friend as well. Uh, but Christmas is not canceled, so Merry Christmas.